we need to look at the nuclear synthesis in stars after the main sequence. We'll start off with a reminder of what happens on the main sequence. The key thing that you need to know about is the proton-proton chain. Basically the protons fuse with this mechanism and they produce helium. This is the thing that, that fuels the Sun. And here we have a nice graphic which shows that. So we have two hydrogens fused to make a heavy hydrogen, deuterium. This deuterium fuses with another hydrogen, produces a light helium, helium-3. And then two three, helium-3s combine to make helium-4, and then you produce two hydrogens. You will need to know this. Also, there's the, what's called the CNO process, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. When this happens in larger stars. You start with a carbon, combines with, uh, fuses with a proton, produces uh, a nitrogen-13. Nitrogen-13 produces carbon-13 and something else. You should be able to figure out what that is. Carbon-13 and a proton fuses to make nitrogen-14. Nitrogen-14 and a proton produces oxygen-15. The oxygen-15 fuses to produce nitrogen-15 plus one other. You can figure that out too. Nitrogen-15 plus proton makes 16 units, so it's carbon-12 plus helium-4. Now, we're interested in particularly what happens after the main sequence. After the helium ignites, after it's moved off the, um, the main sequence, it's turned into a red giant, the helium will then ignite. And then we have a chain which is called the triple alpha process. And you basically have three alpha particles coming together, but not at the same time. The two alpha particles come together, and it produces... Um, Helium plus helium produces beryllium. Then we have a third helium nucleus, an alpha particle, combines to make carbon-12. This is a triple alpha process. This section here is the triple alpha process, because you have alpha, alpha plus alpha, to make carbon-14. This is what happens in the helium-burning part of the star's lifetime, to produce carbon. But then you can also produce oxygen with a more helium. Now you need to know the difference between the different kinds of neutron capture. S process first of all. S stands for slow. Now neutrons which are neutral can interact quite easily with other nuclei which become neutron rich because they've um, they managed to absorb a neutron. So it's the same element, different isotope because it has another neutron. Then what usually happens because it's neutron rich it will try to um, decay via beta decay and as you know beta decay the neutron will decay into a proton and an electron an example would be this carbon-14 decays into nitrogen-14 but this extra neutron turns into an, this uh, proton here so we have one fewer neutron one more proton plus an antineutrino and an electron this is a slow process because beta decay takes time. You have to wait a long time for this to happen. So this is slow neutron capture followed by beta decay. And it's a slow process. It's called an S process. And it basically means that um, you m you're able to produce heavier elements in the helium burning stage. For example, the carbon that you manage to produce Instead of um, just leaving with carbon, by absorbing a neutron, you can produce nitrogen after the beta decay. But it has to happen very slowly. It needs a lot of time. But, you know, we're talking about the helium burning stage. It's only a few thousand million years, so you have time. On the other hand, we have neutron capture, which is the R process. R stands for rapid now, if S is for very, very slow, R is for very, very rapid. As before, neutrons are neutral and they can interact quite easily with other nuclei which become neutron rich. But unlike the slow process, when this happens, it happens very rapidly. So there is no time for beta decay. So it be, means that more and more neutrons are absorbed and they don't get the chance to, to undergo beta decay because that takes a lot of time. 
So it ends up with some very, very heavy nuclei with many neutrons needs a lot of energy to produce these heavy nuclei. And it only occurs when you get a supernova. And at that point you're able to produce much heavier elements um, above and beyond iron. You can produce all these radioactive elements, the uranium, thorium, all this happens to neutron capture the in, via the R process, the rapid process, and it happens in supernova. So all the elements that we have on the Earth, these radioactive elements, basically happened in the last instant of a star's lifetime.